everyone. Lisa Haven here. Well, the White House is now freaking out over a leaked audio recording that was first reported by conservative commentator Jack Posobiec, who reveals in this recording a DOJ attorney talking and advising the Biden administration on how to combat those pesky little religious exemptions for the COVID jab. It's almost as if there's a lot of doubt from this administration on on personal religious beliefs. Here's what I'm talking about. Take a look at this article on the conservativebrief.com and it states, leaked audio, audio shows the White House official discussing combating religious exemption claims. The article goes on that an audio has leaked of a White House official discussing how to combat people who declare a religious exemption from the vaccine mandate. Human Events Senior Editor Jack Pozobuk first reported on the story in uh, on the Human Events Daily podcast. Podcast. In the audio from September, DOJ attorney uh, Marty Lederman is heard advising the Biden administration on how to fight back against employees' religious exemption requests from the federal vaccine mandate. Now, I'm going to go ahead and play the clip for you of this audio leakage. Take a listen. And for instance, in the New York case that's currently going on against the state of New York, the Thomas More Society is representing a bunch of doctors and nurses who claim that they would sin gravely if they acted in cooperation with the evil of abortion. How would they be doing so? The claim is that all three of the current vaccines either have fetal cells that were, that were obtained by abortions in the vaccine itself, or in the case of Pfizer and Moderna, that those vaccines were tested using fetal cells that had been aborted. And even the connection to the previous testing makes them cooperative with evil in a way that their religion prohibits. I don't want to say anything too categorical, but I believe that when this claim will be very difficult for agencies to successfully claim that that's either insincere or non-religious. So I'm just going to pause it right there for a moment. I'm going to go back to the leak recording in just a second. But basically here, um, the attorney is saying that people are seeking religious exemptions because fetal uh, cells were used in either the testing phase or as part of the vaccine, and they have a legitimate concern in regards to religion. And he's saying also there at the very end of that clip uh, that most of these companies are finding this uh, very hard to combat. Uh, But he goes on to explain a couple of things here. Take a listen to the rest of that. This is the most common claim you're going to confront probably. And it's likely that you will have to take as a given the employee's claim. Not always, right? One response that some hospitals have started to give is, well, do you know that Tylenol and Tums and Preparation H, those were all tested using aborted fetal cell lines too. And I expect that employees will then say, well, I didn't know that, but now that you tell me that, I'll stop using those products as well. And then then we will turn to the, what, what does the government have to do once the employee makes that showing. And here, basically, there is a compelling interest, obviously, in keeping our workforce and the public with which we interact safe from COVID. So here, we have the attorney saying, In some cases, they're not always quote unquote accepting these religious exemptions because uh, some hospitals, he says, or some businesses are saying that, well, you take Tylenol, Preparation H, and these things too uh, have fetal cells in them. them." And you can hear the reply. But basically, what you get out of this entire thing is is A, first and foremost, uh, and I'm going to be very blunt on this, there is indication that the Biden administration uh, doubts people's religious beliefs. So he's putting a lot of doubt on what the American people believe. And second, they are actively looking for ways, actively looking for ways to circumvent objections to these vaccines. How can we get around this religious exemption? And that's really what I take a problem with. Uh, And he's really telling people, I don't care what your religious exemption is. Let's find ways to start denying these exemptions and let's start getting the information out, which is exactly what's happening to many people 
people who are filing for these particular uh, vaccine exemptions. Here's what I'm talking about here. Uh, we have MSN, and this is on actually Boston 25 News. Religious exemption requests from COVID vaccines are up, but sincerity of these beliefs are being questioned. Then we also have uh, the Guardian.com. Religious exemptions threaten to undermine U.S. COVID vaccine mandates. So they're a blatant attack right out on religion from the get-go. And this is what I'm seeing it as. It's an attack on, on, on the religion. Then we also have NPR.org. Getting a religious exemption to a vaccine mandate may not be easy. And here's why. And it's not easy. Many people are running through bumps and hoops and all kinds of things in order to get these. And we have Washington Examiner. Companies and states prepare to challenge religious exemptions to these vaccine mandates. And the truth of the matter is a lot of these companies are challenging it. You have to jump through hurdle to hurdle to hoop to hoop to hoop to hoop just to get them. And this is why I think a lot of people are being let go or being fired from their jobs. And as a result, many people are being denied. And here's just a very small clip on those being denied. We have here coin.com legacy health worker denied religious exemption from vaccine. Uh, and then we have here freedomcenter.com after being denied a religious exemption, Washington State University football coach is fired for not taking the COVID vaccine. Boston Herald, Mass General Brigham workers sue after being denied medical and religious exemptions to the vaccine mandate. We have Christianity Daily, Illinois nurses fight back against blanketed denial of religious exemption in hospitals and COVID vaccine mandate. Mandates. Then we have 40 Navy SEALs push for religious exemption for COVID-19 vaccine mandate. They are fighting for their careers. I don't know the end of this yet. This is Christian uh, Post as well. But as you can see, there is a really big battle taking place between companies, businesses, federal workers, you name it, and these religious exemptions. They're not being granted few and far between. And there's so many dot and tittles that they're making it extremely crazy. Some businesses aren't and some businesses are uh, to give you examples of that. But the bottom line here is do we or do we not have a constitution that protects our rights to religious freedoms? And are they and are they or are they or are they not being abused when you have an administration via leaked audio evidence that is lurking for ways to circumvent and go around these religious beliefs? You know, I'm all for whatever religious belief you have as long as, you know, you're not causing violence or anything of that nature. And that is not what is happening here. And so I think um, that this is, in my opinion, a direct attack on our religious freedoms here in the United States of America. Not only is our freedom of press at stake, the freedom to our own body, our medical freedom, but also our religious rights are now at stake and basically on the chopping block. If we can allow them to tell us from a governmental position what we can and can't believe, then you are no longer a free country. And may I say that we're really not anymore here in the United States of America, especially in light of everything that's going on. We have to start getting the right people elected into office. Anyhow, um, please don't forget, can't wait to hear your comments on this. Please don't forget to check out my partner at healthwithlisa.com. If you guys haven't tried this collagen, you can see I have it here. I've got plenty of empty bags that I've already gone through. Uh, but um, I love this stuff because it really helps your hair, skin, and nails, that kind of thing. Uh, and it's got five different types of collagen and it's one that is actually effective and it's been really good. Uh, one of my favorite um, products out there. So check it out at healthwithlisa.com. Anyhow, thanks again for tuning in. I'm Lisa Haven, signing out.